Tigre 24 Studios, in association with Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures Productions, are both proud to present Saving Pirate Ryan. Cinders and ashes, shouted Sir Topham Hatt. What happened here? The controller of the Northwestern Railway couldn't believe what he was looking at. Part of the main line track near Gordon's Hill had been blown to bits by an explosion the day before. It was a crate of dynamite, sir, said Alfie. Kelly and I stumbled upon it yesterday and we tried to warn the station, but it was too late. Stanley did an excellent job of avoiding this big hole in the ground, though. Oh, so that's why Stanley was out of control, he murmured. Perhaps Thomas isn't all to blame for the crash. Wait, Stanley had a crash? asked Kelly. When did this happen? Apparently, right after he avoided this disaster. I just visited him at the steamworks, and he's going to be there for a while. The pack had assembled near the broken track, but there was little they could do. Where do we even begin? asked Byron. There's too much debris. We've got to get this track back together somehow, shouted Isabella. This is the main line. It's the busiest section of the railway. Help me prop up this support, called Oliver. Maybe we can stabilize the pillar before it's too late. All right, that's enough, shouted Sir Topham Hatt. Everybody, stop, please. Unfortunately, none of this twisted track is repairable and the trains will have to take a different route until it's fixed. However, I do know of a steelworks on the mainland that can get us some new track very soon. But for now, let's focus on clearing the narrow gauge line so that at least one of my railways can still function. Just then, Ryan puffed up. He hadn't heard about the explosion and thought the track was clear. Whoa, what happened here? he asked. It looks like some dynamite went off and destroyed the main line. I'm guessing that evil pirate Sailor John is behind this. Oh, yes, probably, said Ryan awkwardly. Well, anyway, I must be going. Right, of course. Please get back to the yard and help with the trains, Ryan. All of the engines are counting on you since Stanley is out of action. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. That was a close one, said Sailor John from inside his cab. I'm surprised the dynamite went off. That's a big success for me. But I can't believe you treat that man with an ounce of respect. All he does is order you about. Yeah, you and me both. Now where am I going again? Just head towards Ulfstead Castle. I'll tell you when to turn. Contrary to Sir Topham Hatt's orders, Ryan was not heading to the yard like he was supposed to. Meanwhile, the rest of the engines had gone back to work following the big announcement, but there was nobody shunting any of the trains. What's the hold up? shouted Gordon. Stafford, where are my coaches? I'm sorry, Gordon, he called, but because of the meeting this morning, I wasn't able to get to my charging station and now my battery's dead. You're going to have to wait, or you can just fetch your coaches yourself. Huh, disgraceful, said Gordon. I would never be caught doing that. Just then, Gordon's coaches were coupled up to him. The engines looked back to see Thomas shunting them into place. What are you doing, Thomas? asked Henry. You should have left with your own train by now. Not today and probably never again, he said sadly. Percy can take them. I'll just shunt here in the yard since no one else is around. The engines were sad to see Thomas was so unhappy. Percy didn't want to argue and quickly pulled Annie and Clarabelle away. You need to cheer up, Thomas, said Edward. Every engine makes mistakes. You're taking this way too hard. Yes, Thomas, we can wait for Stafford, added Mr. Percival. No need to put yourself through this. Just then, James puffed in. He had been finally released from the works. Hello, everyone, he said loudly. Yes, everybody's favorite red engine is back and ready to pull trains again. Aw, poor Thomas. I saw Percy was pulling Annie and Clarabelle. 
What happened to you? Did Sir Topham Hatt demote you back to the yard again? Um, James, whispered Henry. Don't tease him now. You don't know the full story. Oh, but I think I do. The little blue tank engine that wanted to see the world is now back making friends with the trucks and coaches again. Sad day indeed. How insensitive of you, said Edward crossly. Thomas has been through a lot lately, and you should be trying to make him feel better, not worse. James, Thomas was involved in two serious accidents yesterday, murmured Gordon. It would be wise of you to take your train and move on. James's smile quickly faded. Oh, I had no idea. I've been away at the works, and Victor doesn't tell you anything about what's going on, and... Oh, I'm sorry, Thomas. I did know, honestly. But Thomas ignored the engines and went back to his work. Meanwhile, on the other side of the island, Ryan had stopped in front of the Olstead Mine. What are we doing here? I thought we were getting back at Thomas and Sir Topham had. We are going to do that, said Sailor John, but I have to pick up a few supplies first. Now bust on through that gate and head up the tunnel. Bust through the gate, asked Ryan. That doesn't seem very nice. Oh, it's just a few pieces of wood. If you can't handle this, then maybe you are the wrong accomplice after all. We'll be doing a lot worse things than trespassing, me hearty. Ryan looked at the tunnel and summoned all of his determination. He knocked down the warning sign with ease and quickly made his way into the mine. Wow, you have a lot of stuff in here, he gasped. Yes, this is where I've been storing all of me goodies, and you're going to help me get them off of Sodor. Ryan, is that you, Ryan? asked Skiff. Oh, thank goodness, you've come to rescue me. Ah, shut it, Skiff. He's not here to rescue you. Now just sit and be quiet. Hey, I remember you, said Ryan. You and Sailor John here were making all of that fuss a few months back when you were running around on the rails and such. Ah, yes, those were some good times. Sadly, Skiff here couldn't keep his mouth shut, so I had to stop with those adventures and get help from George and Bulgy instead. Ryan looked at Skiff. The railboat had obviously not been out of the mine in a long time. So, is Skiff coming with us, I presume? Oh, no, he'll only slow us down and holler for help at the first sight when he sees another engine. I don't know what I'll be doing with him just yet. Skiff looked awfully sad. Ryan tried not to think too much about it. So this is all the stuff that you're taking with you? He asked. Yes, I'll be taking most of it. I won't be needing some things like the Christmas decorations, but I'm going to try and fit everything else into those two cargo cars there. You've got a full bunker of coal, right? Because we'll be out of here by morning. Yes, I'm all ready to go, said Ryan cautiously. This is moving awfully fast. Listen, if you can't keep up, then bow out right now, said Sailor John. Too many times I've been denied by trucks and engines, and I won't be hung out once again. No, I'm, I'm fine. Everything's fine, he replied. I want to do this, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Sailor John smiled. That's the spirit. Now let's get all of this stuff organized. That evening, Sir Topham Hatt returned to Natford after surveying the damage near Gordon's Hill. Sir, the engines are saying there was some sort of explosion on the main line yesterday. This wouldn't happen to be true, would it? Yes, I'm afraid it is. I'll have to, I mean, you'll have to, reroute the main line trains around the obstacle until the new track pieces arrive from the mainland in a few days. Yes, right. Can I do that? Oh, I guess I can since I'm in charge now. This whole controller of the entire railway thing will take some getting used to. Yes, now I'd like to speak with Thomas if that's possible. Do you know when he'll be getting back with his train? Oh, Thomas didn't take his coaches this morning. Percy pulled them instead. Oh, that's peculiar. I thought he would be very eager to see his passengers after missing them yesterday. 
Something doesn't seem right with him, sir. The engines were discussing it earlier. It seems as though the two accidents have really affected him. Perhaps it would be best if you could reassure him of your confidence in him. Yes, that is a good idea, said Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, there he is. I think I will go do that. Um, sir, sorry to interrupt, said Winston, but your first meeting for the Great Railway Show is about to begin soon. We need to leave right now, since the main line is out, in order to make it there on time. Oh, bother. I suppose Winston is right. Well, I will have to talk to Thomas some other time. But please keep an eye on him, Peregrine. The other engines don't see it. But Thomas takes his job as the number one engine very seriously, and I bet these accidents have completely depleted his confidence. I will keep you informed, sir, said Mr. Percival. Have a fun time at the Great Railway Show. Right, and keep my railway in running order while I'm gone. And try and put a stop to that mad pirate if you can. I'm positive he was the one who blew up my tracks. Yes, sir. I'll try, sir, shouted Mr. Percival. Oh dear, this is not the best time for him to leave. While Sir Topham Hatt was on his way to the mainland, Sailor John and Ryan were finalizing the plans for their great escape. I've moved everything I'm taking outside into those cargo cars, he said. Your job is to pull them to the docks, where I'll have a ship waiting to take both of us away from this miserable island. Sounds savvy? Yes, this actually might work after all. I'll be outside getting the last few things together. As soon as the moon is high, we're leaving. And Sailor John walked away towards the mine entrance. Please don't do this, Ryan, came Skiff's voice. You're going to regret working with Sailor John. He's a mean pirate. Look what he did to me. I'm sure Sailor John has his reasons for locking you up here, he insisted. You probably can't be trusted. See, I can actually be trusted. That's why Sailor John is letting me work with him. Ryan, I don't know what you're so angry about, but please, don't let it ruin your time on Sodor. Whatever happened, I'm sure I can help you fix it. It's too late for that, he muttered. I've seen all that I've needed to see. Thomas always bossing everybody around, getting away with whatever he wants. Sir Topham Hatt turning a blind eye to him because he's the favorite. Maybe you can put up with that nonsense, but I can't anymore. I'd give anything to put up with that so-called nonsense, exclaimed Skiff. Have you forgotten I've been trapped in here for months? You don't know how good you have it out there. Let's get going, shouted Sailor John. The sun is set and the moon is out. It's the perfect time to get to the docks without being spotted. Well, goodbye, Skiff. And if I remember, I'll tell Cranky about where Sailor John has hidden you. Help should be here in the next day or so. Stay positive until then. And Ryan disappeared down the track and out of the mine. Here's the train, said Sailor John. Think you can pull it? Without a doubt, said Ryan. Say, aren't you going to let Skiff out now that we're leaving? Surely he's no harm anymore. Oh, you're right. That reminds me. And Sailor John walked back into the mine. Come to say goodbye, asked Skiff weakly. You were a good railboat while it lasted, but I think it's time that I set you free. Skiff's eyes lit up. Oh, thank you, Sailor John. I knew you wouldn't let me down, and I promise I won't tell anyone about your... But instead of removing Skiff from the mine, Sailor John walked over to a crate of dynamite and lit the fuse. Sorry, Skiff, but I can't have any loose ends. Hope you understand. But Skiff didn't understand. Oh no, I'm going to get blown up. I've got to get out of here. Outside, Ryan and the train were ready to go. Just then, Sailor John came running out of the mine. What happened? Where's Skiff? Let's go, let's go! Get out of here before she blows! Ryan didn't have time to ask any more questions. As soon as Sailor John was aboard, he quickly pulled the train away. Stop! Stop! shouted Skiff. 
Oh, maybe I can blow the fuse out. Oh, it's not working. What am I going to do? Maybe I can try and wiggle away. With all of his might, Skiff pressed himself up against the mine door. The fuse had just about run out. Hope this works, he shouted and shut his eyes. Boom! The door blew open and Skiff shot out of the mine where he landed in a field with only scrapes and scratches. Oh, uh, I'm alive! I'm alive! Oh my, that was quite the ride! Hey you, Ryan, Sailor John, look at this, I'm all right. You tried to blow him up, gasped Ryan. It was my only option, now move it. While Skiff was relieved that he was all right, Ryan and Sailor John were on the run of their lives. They raced down the line with only the moon lighting their way. Good speed so far, said Sailor John. At this pace, we'll be out of here before dawn. Meanwhile, at the search and rescue center, the engines and rescue vehicles were rudely awakened by a loud alarm. Oh, what could it be this time? asked Belle. I was sleeping so peacefully. Why can't everybody have their emergencies during the day? yawned Flynn. Sounds like a report of an explosion near Ulfstead Mine, said Harold. I'll go investigate while you sleepyheads wake up. It's probably that pirate again blowing something up, said Butch wearily. We've gotten calls from around the Coldy Fell area in the past, but he's never there when we arrive. Just then, a train raced past at full speed. Who was that? gasped Flynn. I think it was a runaway engine, said Belle. Don't worry, I'm going to try and stop it and she quickly raced after the train. Meanwhile, Harold had just arrived at Olstead Mine. There doesn't appear to be any fire, he murmured. But what's with all the Christmas decorations? Wait a moment, I see something. It's a sailboat. No, a railboat. It's Skiff. What are you doing here, Skiff? It doesn't matter, he said gleefully. I'm alive, and that's all that counts. Oh, you should have seen me, Harold. I sailed out of there like a runaway minecart. It was glorious. Wait, what were you doing inside of that mine? Oh, right. Well, Sailor John had me locked in there for the past few months or so. What? Where's Sailor John now? He and Ryan are making a run for it. They stole a bunch of valuables from the castle, too. This is terrible, said Harold. I'm so glad you're okay, Skiff, but I have to go alert the others right away. Help will be here soon. No, take your time, said Skiff easily. Ah, oh, that fresh air feels nice. I wonder if the children in Augsburg have missed me. Meanwhile, Harold raced back to the search and rescue center. Calling all available units, I have a report that Sailor John is attempting to make a break for it. I repeat, Sailor John is on the loose. He has help from an engine named Ryan. I know who that is, said Captain. I've seen him up in Arlsberg before. Just then, Ryan and Sailor John raced through the rescue center once again. Bell was hot on their tail. This isn't a runaway, gasped Flynn. It's a robbery. We have to stop them. And Flynn joined the pursuit. Ryan and Sailor John were almost to the docks when suddenly... Oh no! Thomas, look out! Ryan, stop! At the last moment, Ryan quickly turned onto another track and began to scale the hill up to the top of the mountain. Where does this lead? asked Sailor John. What? It's just a circle up here? What were you thinking? Get back down there before we become trapped! But it was already too late. Bell and Flynn had followed them into the quarry and were stopped on the track below. We've got them cornered, shouted Bell. They're at the top of the Sodor China Clay Works. Ryan looked down at the engines that had been chasing him. He realized he had made a terrible mistake. Oh, what am I doing? He gasped. I'm working with a pirate to try and get back at a railway that I actually do care about. 
Oh, this is terrible. Sailor John hopped out. Get down there right now, he shouted. Bulldoze them off the tracks before more help arrives. I, I can't, whispered Ryan. I've already caused too much trouble. Sailor John was furious. I knew I couldn't trust you. You're just as worthless as the rest of them. Now I'm stuck up here in a desolate quarry with no help and a wimpy engine. When Mr. Percival heard the news, he quickly rushed over to the quarry. Flynn had left his trailer at the bottom of the hill so that Sailor John couldn't attempt to leave without them knowing. What's going on here? he asked. This has to be one of the most insane things I've ever witnessed. There's a lot of valuable items up there, said Flynn. It looks like Sailor John has lived up to his pirate name. He's trying to steal the treasure. Thomas was shocked. Ryan could have easily run me over, he said, but he turned away before there was an accident. That was really brave of him. Let's send Harold up there and see what this pirate wants, said Mr. Percival. Soon, Harold took to the skies and began to hover over where Ryan and Sailor John had stopped. Shoo! Get out of here, you whirlybird! This is my treasure, and you aren't going to take it from me! Just then, Sailor John spotted a crate of dynamite that had been left on the mountain. Fine, you won't listen to me. Take this instead. And he lit the fuse and hurled a stick of dynamite into the air. Harold saw the projectile coming and quickly flew away. A loud explosion rocked the quarry. You started throwing dynamite at me, said Harold as he landed. Now what are we going to do? Oh, I don't know, said Mr. Percival nervously, but I do know of one man that does. Yes, what seems to be the problem here, came a voice. Sir Topham Hatch, shouted the engines. What are you doing back here, sir, asked Mr. Percival. Oh, I knew it wasn't a good time to leave my railway. During the first meeting, I had a feeling that something like this was going to happen. Is that... Is that Sailor John, the elusive pirate that's been terrorizing this island for far too long? Yes, sir, said Flynn. According to Harold, he and Ryan are trying to make a break for it. I'm guessing they were likely headed to the mainland. Yes, yes. Wait, Ryan? Our Ryan? What's he doing with that man? Something's not right. Ryan would never get involved with such a shady character. I don't know, sir, said Butch. Remember what he was like when he first came to the railway? You almost had to send him away because of all the trouble he caused. Yes, but surely Ryan is a reformed engine by now, stumbled Sir Topham Hatt. I just can't believe this. If I hadn't fully lost control of my railway before now, then this has certainly done it. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt noticed Thomas off to the side. The blue tank engine was looking sad and quiet. Ah, Thomas, I meant to talk to you before I left, but... It's all right, sir, he interrupted. I know I messed up big time, and I'm really sorry. If you want me to leave Sodor, then I will go. <laughs> leave Sodor, laughed Sir Topham Hat. Why would I ever ask you to do that? Well, you've done that in past with other engines, murmured Thomas. Yes, to troublemakers and lazy engines, which you are neither. I will admit, I was rather harsh to Logan, but I don't take lightly to someone who associates with conspirators that are planning the downfall of my railway. So, what about Ryan here? asked Bell. What are you going to do about him when this is all done? Well, we're not there yet. The situation has only just begun. And I think we're going to need some help if everyone's going to get out of this safely. Harold, get back up there and see if you can spot anything new. From a safe distance, of course. Let's get Jeremy and Tiger Moth up into the air as well, so we can fully understand what we're dealing with. Sailor John must realize that he is clearly not getting out of this quarry without a miracle occurring. What's keeping him and Ryan up there? Meanwhile, back at the sheds, 
All of the engines were beginning to hear the news. Ryan is working with Sailor John, yelled Mavis. He's trying to help him escape. That's horrible, gasped Donald. Why would he do such a thing? Let's calm down, everyone, said Edward. Yes, this news is all quite, uh, how would you say it? Interesting, I suppose. But we all have jobs to do here in a bit. The sun is rising and we must get ready for work. That's what Sir Topham Hatt would want us to do. The engines agreed it was time to get ready. But behind the sheds, George and Bulgy had been listening in carefully. Well, that didn't go as planned, grunted Bulgy. I knew they were going to get stopped somewhere, and that quarry is about the worst place it could happen. Don't tell the boss this, but I'm surprised they even made it that far, muttered George. That mine is a long ways from the docks. Well, now that they're trapped, I suppose we should go put the second part of the plan into action. Agreed. Let's meet up with the lorries and fulfill our part of the deal. And the two rolled silently away. Back at the quarry, Harold, Jeremy, and Tigermoth had taken to the skies. Marvelous, simply marvelous, said Sir Topham Hatt. Arthur, go to MC Bun and pick up a train load of fresh coffee for everyone. I have a feeling that we're going to be here a while, so we might as well get settled in for a good long wait. And Mr. Percival, I appreciate your help so far, but I need someone to make sure that the trains are running as scheduled today. So please go with Arthur and make sure everyone is on time. It would be my pleasure, sir, said Mr. Percival. Now what do we do? asked Thomas. The only thing we can do. See what this pirate wants. At the top of the quarry, Sailor John was still very cross. Of course I picked the one engine that immediately bolts for a dead-end circle during an escape, he shouted. You are a disgrace. You could never pull off the heist that I've done in the past. You're too weak and confused. And you're not really that fast, honestly. I was just being nice back there. Ryan had had enough. I'm not going to sit here and be insulted, he argued. You can keep your treasure. I just want to get out of this. And Ryan began to puff forward, but Sailor John quickly intercepted him and slammed the gate shut. Hey, let me go. I don't want to be here. You're going to see this one through, he warned. You're not going to leave me out to dry just like everybody else has. Plus, you're also a bargaining tool in case things go wrong. Let's see how much your fat man values a traitorous engine. Ryan reluctantly backed up to the train. With the gate shut, he was going nowhere whether he liked it or not. Meanwhile, George and Bulgy had arrived at Sailor John's dynamite stand near Arlsberg Harbor. The horrid lorries were there as well. I'm guessing you heard about the news then, asked George. Of course we did, grunted Lorry 3. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here, would we? Sheesh, you guys are a ton of fun to be around, muttered George. All right, in accordance with Sailor John's plan of if things didn't go the way we want them to go, let's split up and spread this dynamite around the island. But you better do it quickly. I overheard him talking in his sleep one night, and there are timers installed in these crates. But they could be unreliable, to say the least. The lorry's eyes lit up. Then what are we waiting for? asked Lorry 3. Let's get out of here before this whole stand blows. I'm heading to Natford Station, said Lorry 1. Where is everyone else going? The top of Gordon's Hill, replied Lorry 2. It's the docks for me, added Lorry 3. I'm going to the bridge on Thomas's branch line, said George. And I'm heading to Ulfstead Castle, finished Bulgy. It will certainly be a sight to see when these things blow up, said Lorry 1. But I don't want to be anywhere near them when they do. Let's get moving. And the lorries raced away. Back at the quarry, Sailor John was out of options and Ryan was out of hope. Please let me go, he pleaded. 
I won't make a sound, and I won't tell Sir Topham Hatt anything. He probably won't even want to see my face after all this. Like I said, you're not going anywhere, so stop asking. Okay, it's nearing mid-morning, so hopefully George and Bulgy and the lorries have gotten word of our failed escape by now. Thank you again, Ryan, for that. So I suppose we carry on with the next part of the plan. The next part? asked Ryan. There's a next part? I thought your plan was to get to the docks and set sail. Well, yes, that was my original plan. But in tricky situations like these, it's always good to have a backup plan. And that's exactly what we're going to enact here. Sailor John walked over to the edge of the cliff. Hey you, down there! I want to talk about things, but I can't hear anything with all of this noise up here. Call off your planes and helicopters, and we can reach a deal or something. Oh, wow! He wants to talk, exclaimed Belle. That's a step in the right direction, right? Hmm, I suppose so, murmured Sir Topham Hatt. My only concern is that Sailor John is a pretty tricky man, and I'm thinking he has something planned that we don't know about. Okay then, he shouted back. Harold, Tiger Moth, and Jeremy, come land and refuel while Sailor John and I try to have a conversation. Sailor John was very pleased. All right, first things first, I want you to know the situation you're in. I have two cars full of precious treasure and other fine goodies up here, and I'm not leaving without them. Second, I, of course, have this backstabbing engine up here that you probably won't want after today, but nonetheless, I still have him. And third, there's a crate of dynamite behind me, and I would have no qualms about blowing everything up that I just mentioned. The engines were shocked. He surely doesn't mean Ryan, right? asked Butch. And yes, that does include Ryan, he shouted. Oh dear, said Thomas. I knew this pirate was villainous, but he's even crazier than we thought. Thank you for the update, shouted Sir Topham Hatt. Now here's the situation you're faced with. We have your one and only exit blocked down here. You have no help, and you're stuck at the top of a mountain with no supplies. All of us down here don't mind waiting a few days or weeks for you to finally make up your mind. Have you forgotten about these precious jewels and treasure up here? asked Sailor John. Blow them up! I don't care! They're just material goods anyway. Grrr, growled Sailor John. All right, then. Let's see if you value this engine a little more than some gold and silver. Oh, no, gasped Belle. Ryan! Sir Topham Hatt stared up at the crazy pirate. You won't do that, he replied. First of all, Ryan is still my engine, and I take care of all of my engines. Second, he's your only way of escape out of your current situation, so I wouldn't get too comfortable with that idea. Blast! He's right, grunted Sailor John. Well, I'm not going down without a fight, you hear me? Loud and clear, laughed Sir Topham Hat. Let's just end this before somebody gets hurt, shall we? Oh no, I've got more in store for you, Sir Topham Hat. Just you wait and see. Meanwhile, Bulgy and George were preparing to leave with the last of the dynamite. You know, said Bulgy, I don't think Sailor John is going to escape from the quarry. Call me crazy, but he's stuck up there, and he's never going to succeed. I was just thinking the same thing, said George, but I didn't want to say it out loud while the lorries were here. I definitely don't want to be on the wrong side of Sir Topham Hatt when things come to an end. And it looks like Sailor John isn't going to win, murmured Bulgy. Perhaps we should leave this dynamite here so we don't get in trouble when this is all over? I like your thinking, exclaimed Bulgy. Now let's move it before it explodes. And the two raced away from the dynamite stand as fast as they could. 
On the other hand, the Lorries were going through with their promises. Lorry 1 had just arrived at Knapford Station. The morning trains were about to leave. All right, everyone, said Mr. Percival. Sir Topham Hatt is back on Sodor, but he's currently dealing with Sailor John, so I'm going to make sure that all of his trains stay on time. Gordon, are you prepared to leave with the Express? Yes, I am. As soon as all of my passengers have boarded, I'm going to leave because of the detour near my hill. Excellent. James, what are you missing? A few trucks and a brake van? Yes, and I would have been out of here ages ago if Stafford had some help. Where's Stanley or Rosie? We need some more shunters in the yard. Stanley was in a terrible crash, said Henry. Show some respect, will you? Well, I didn't know that. Like I said, Victor doesn't tell me anything. I'm ready to go, Pete Percy. I guess somebody has to take Thomas's train since he's busy with my mail. While all of the engines were talking, Lorry 1 had crept onto the tracks and quietly dropped the dynamite. The ticking noise had grown louder, and he was not about to be around when it went off. That's the last of them, said Gordon. I'm ready to go now, Mr. Percival. May I leave? Yes, as soon as the guard gives you the go-ahead, you may proceed, Gordon. But the guard didn't blow his whistle. The signalman was concerned with an object on the rails just outside of the station. Silly nonsense, wished Gordon. It's probably just another false alarm. I'm leaving anyway. And he began to pull out of the station. Meanwhile, at Gordon's Hill, Lorry 2 had just unloaded his dynamite near the top of the mountain. This'll get him good, he said. Oh, that timer sounds awfully loud. Better get out of here before... Oh, hey! Paxton was pulling a train and had caught Lorry 2 on the tracks. Stop! Don't go any further! The line's out ahead! But it was too late. Paxton applied his brakes, but he still ended up shoving Lorry 2 off the track and into the destruction below. Hey, watch it, Paxton! shouted Nelson jokingly. We're trying to rebuild this bridge. Stop tossing garbage at us, would ya? The pack laughed at Lorry 2's misfortune. Just you wait, he chuckled. You're going to be doing a lot more rebuilding in just a second here. Meanwhile, Lorry 3 had managed to make it to the docks without being spotted. Cranky was busy unloading other packages and didn't see him pull up. Back at the quarry, Sailor John was prepared to start his second plan. In the distance, he could barely see Lorry 3 driving away from the docks. Well, at least that one made his delivery, he muttered. I hope the rest of them did too. Now let's turn the tables, shall we? Look, there he is again, sir, shouted Thomas. I wonder what he wants this time. Okay, you got me, laughed Sailor John. I know I'm in a bit of a sticky situation up here, and you obviously want your engine and treasure back. But here's a new proposition. How about you let me go and nobody gets hurt? Sounds savvy? Sir Topham Hatt chuckled. And what makes you think I'm going to agree to that? Because, like you, I also have a lot of power. Or have you forgotten that I run a dynamite factory? What does he mean by that? asked Butch. Sir Topham Hatt suddenly spun around. Go tell Duck and Oliver to check on the dynamite stand up in Arlesburg, he said quickly. But tell them to keep their distance. Yes, sir, said Butch, and he roared away. Ah, yes, laughed Sailor John. Send your slaves on their way to do your dirty work. But I'm afraid it's far too late for that, Topham. Far too late indeed. At the station, Gordon was pulling out of the platform when Mr. Percival stepped in front of him. Gordon, I told you, you must wait for the guard's whistle. We need to be sure everything is ready to go. Ugh, groaned Gordon. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Suddenly, the dynamite outside of the station exploded with a thunderous bang, and Mr. Percival was thrown to the ground. 
the engines were left gasping at the massive destruction it left behind. Cinders and ashes, cried Percy. All of the track is blown up. We can't get out of the station, added James. What about our trains? Gordon was most upset. That, that could have been me out there, he gasped. Oh, you saved me, Mr. Percival. How can I ever repay you? Just, just follow railway guidelines from now on, he said breathlessly. Oh my, that was a little too close for comfort. With the track out, the engines were stranded at the station. Meanwhile, at Gordon's Hill, Paxton was beginning to back up when that crate of dynamite exploded as well. The track vibrated and shook with fury, and then there was complete silence. Look what's happened to Gordon's Hill, gasped Max. While the mountain had remained intact, the blast had completely obliterated all vegetation and trees, creating a bare, rocky look. Is everyone all right? asked Oliver. Oh, that's not good. Someone's not going to be happy about his hill when he sees this. Oh dear, I'm marooned out here, called Paxton. What a terrible start to the day. Then, at the docks, Cranky was still unloading packages when he heard a loud noise in the distance. Did you guys hear that? he asked. That was huge. I think I see a cloud of smoke near Gordon's Hill. I'm sure it has something to do with the repairs that are going on with the track and all, said Salty. Now let's stay focused here. Oh, by the way, Cranky, what's this shipment of dynamite for? Dynamite? I didn't order any dynamite. The quarry doesn't need it anymore. Well, somebody has gifted you a present then, me hearty, chuckled Salty. What are you going to do with it? Well, now that you mention it, I think I'm going to put it where it belongs. In the ocean, of course. And Cranky lifted up the package and promptly chucked it into the sea. Cranky, that wasn't necessary, said Arthur. That's littering and it's not right. We're going to have to go fish that out later today. Ah, who cares, muttered Cranky. It was probably made at Sailor John's factory, and we all know how much of a help he is to this railway. Fortunately for Cranky and everybody else at the docks, the timer on the crate of dynamite had malfunctioned and failed to go off. And when the crate hit the seawater, the gunpowder was officially ruined. But not everyone was as lucky as the docks. Now why are we going up here? asked Oliver. Sir Topham Hatt's orders, that's all I know, replied Duck. We gotta check out the dynamite stand and report back to him. Ah, hello there, whistled Bert. Nice to see you, Great Western Engines, again. Hello, Bert, said Oliver. Sorry we can't stay and chat, but we have to check out Sailor John's dynamite stand over there. Oh, come on, you haven't seen your old pal Bert in forever. And you're only going to give me a passing hello? That's not very nice, you know. Fine, said Duck. Salutations, Bert. Anything interesting going on here? Just then, the entire dynamite factory detonated, sending debris everywhere. Duck and Oliver stared in horror. Ah, uh, yes, now that you mention it, there is something interesting going on today. That dynamite stand just blew everything to smithereens. We would have been right next to that had you not stopped us, murmured Duck. I think we owe you a big thank you, Bert. No problem at all. Although that begs the question, why did the dynamite stand blow up? Must have been a faulty fuse, eh? We need to report this back to Sir Topham Hatt, agreed Oliver. We'll talk later, Bert. And the two engines rushed away. Back at the quarry, Sailor John had made his point. In the distance, Sir Topham Hatt could see a large cloud of smoke coming from Gordon's Hill. So, like I was saying, power, we both have it, and I've just put mine on display. What have you done? cried Sir Topham Hatt. That's my railway, and those are my engines. You had your chance, said Sailor John smoothly, but you called my bluff and I reciprocated. 
Right now, your entire railway is in shambles. The tracks leading out of Natford Station are destroyed. That mountain you call Gordon's Hill is demolished. And over there, at the docks, that annoying crane is, uh... But Sailor John could clearly see that Cranky was upright and still working. Well, uh, any moment now, he'll come tumbling down just like the rest of them. Must be a delay or something. Cranky, shouted Thomas. Look out! There's a crate of dynamite over here somewhere. Oh, that thing? he asked. Were you the one that ordered that? I'm sorry, Thomas, but it was in my way, so I disposed of it, to say the least. He threw it in the ocean, said Arthur crossly. We should be the ones calling you a bug. The litter bug, that is. Oh, that's perfect, exclaimed Thomas. That's wonderful, actually. Thank you so much for littering, Cranky. You're welcome, Thomas. See, not everybody's as angry as you two are. Salty and Arthur rolled their eyes. Cranky's all right, gasped Thomas. He must have dumped the dynamite in the ocean before it had the chance to explode. Aha, laughed Sir Topham Hat. Hear that, Sailor John. Not all of your sinister plans have been working out. Grr, well, I'm not done yet. Right now, your railway is completely cut in half by my detonations. I've taken out the tracks at Knapford, one at the overpass near Ellsbridge, and one at Ulfstead Castle. Your trains have nowhere to go. None of them can make a complete run. And there's more in store if you don't give in to my demands. Just then, Duck and Oliver puffed up. Sir, they shouted. We were just up at Arlsberg, and there was a huge explosion at the dynamite factory. Wait. That's not one of the targets that Sailor John just mentioned, said Sir Topham Hat. And how did you get down here when all of the lines are blown up? asked Bell. Not all of the lines are gone, said Duck. Sure, Natford's a mess, and Gordon's Hill is in bad shape, but we just took the track through Ulfstead Castle and made it here in no time. So not all of the dynamite did go off, exclaimed Thomas. There still might be a chance for us, sir. Yes, it appears that way, he muttered. It seems as though Sailor John forgot to move the rig dynamite he had at his factory to that bridge on your branch line and to Wolfstead Castle. But let's not let him in on that secret. Let's make him believe he succeeded. But why would we do that? asked Bell. It gives us an advantage. It's something we know about that he doesn't like he's been preaching all this time. It's all about power, and finally, we have some. What's going on down there? shouted Sailor John. Thinking up terms for a truce, I hope. Oh, yes, indeed, said Sir Topham Hat. These two engines have just informed me that there's chaos everywhere, and you said Gordon's Hill isn't even a hill anymore. My goodness, this is terrible. Sailor John laughed. I knew this would work out. All of that extra dynamite I've been producing for months finally did come in handy. And it appears my assistants went through with their jobs like they were supposed to. Oh no, shouted Thomas loudly. This is just awful. Everything's been destroyed and the railway is cut in two. Just like you said, Sailor John. Now what are we going to do? Funny you should ask that, Thomas. If you continue to refuse me a way out of this dilemma, then I will keep producing more dynamite at me factory and have my trusty delivery lorries plant them around the island until there's nothing left at all. But he can't do that, said Duck. Oliver and I were just there. The factory's been destroyed. But Sailor John doesn't know that, said Sir Topham Hat. This could really work to our advantage. Stay strong, everyone. I think I may have a plan. Back at Natford Station, Mr. Percival was trying to calm down the passengers. So you're saying there's a mad bomber on the loose? They argued. No, of course not. This was a slight malfunction by a lorry. It dropped the dynamite accidentally while crossing the track, and a random spark happened to set it alight. 
but that's why we always ask our road vehicles to use the crossings so mistakes like this don't happen. Oh, said the passengers, so you're saying it's not your fault? Not in the slightest, chuckled Mr. Percival. The Northwestern Railway prides itself on being a safe, reliable service, and you can always count on that when traveling aboard our luxurious trains. Then what's with all the crashes? asked a passenger. Yeah, I've been in three accidents in this year alone, said another. Well, we're not perfect by any means, but that's a question to take up with the superintendent of the railway, Sir Topham Hatt. But he's not here right now, so I would save them for later. The passengers were unhappy that their trains were late, but they couldn't find anything else to argue about. The engines were impressed with how Mr. Percival was handling the situation. You're doing an excellent job, sir, said James. You're going to fill Sir Topham Hatt's shoes very nicely while he's at the Great Railway Show. Thank you, but I'm more suited to the calmer, quieter life on the Scarlowy Railway. I do hope Sir Topham Hatt isn't gone for too long. Speaking of that, how much longer are we going to wait here? asked Percy. I'm not sending any trains out there until we get confirmation from Sir Topham Hatt that this is all done with, he replied. Who knows what other traps could be waiting on the rails? We must keep the passengers safe, and you engines, of course. The engines didn't want to admit it, but they were relieved that they didn't have to venture out onto the unpredictable tracks. But their worries were to be short-lived. Back at the quarry, Sir Topham Hatt was preparing to make a final push. We have Sailor John right where we want him, he told the engines. He thinks his plans have succeeded when, in reality, they've failed miserably. Let's get Sailor John off that mountain, get our treasure back, and most importantly, save Ryan at all costs. The engines cheered loudly. Um, excuse me, came a voice. Hi there, I work for the museum and we would love it if you could retrieve that stolen treasure for us. We would love to put it on display when this is all said and done so that our museum gets more visitors. Um, we're kind of busy here, said Oliver. Yes, unfortunately saving that treasure is the last thing on our mind, agreed Sir Topham Hatt. There is an engine up there that needs rescuing more than any jewels could ever need. Well, here's the thing, said the man. We've all heard about the massive amounts of destruction that have taken place on your railway in the past few days. From the crashes and now these explosions. How are you going to pay for all of the repairs? Sir Topham Hatt hadn't really thought about it. Uh, that will come later, he replied. For now, we have an engine to save. My point is... The museum would be willing to offer you a large sum of money for the treasure to help cover the damages. Considering all of the accidents that happen on this railway on a weekly basis, we believe you'll find this offer very enticing. And Sir Topham Hatt did. He quickly realized that even if the Island of Sodor escaped from Sailor John's ruthless grasp, there was going to be a lot of cleaning up to do. Hmm, I'll see what I can do, he said quietly. Now I would go back inside if I were you, because it's about to get very noisy out here. Sir, you wouldn't possibly abandon Ryan for the treasure, would you? asked Duck. I don't think it's about Ryan anymore, interjected Belle. Yes, he's our friend, but he's also the one who started this whole thing. Engines can be rebuilt, added Oliver, but once the treasure is destroyed... It's gone forever. I can't believe this is even a question, interrupted Thomas. We have to save Ryan, no matter the cost. And, and if we don't, I will leave Sodor. What? gasped the engines. You can't do that. I will do whatever it takes to keep this railway functioning, even if it means that I'm not on it. Let's face it. I'm a pretty popular engine, and I'm sure other railways would be willing to pay good money to have me on their service. I think I know what Ryan's angry about, and it all comes back to me. I'm the real cause for all of this trouble. I need to accept the consequences for my actions, and I'm prepared to do just that. The engines were in shock. 
Nobody knew what to say. That's very brave of you, Thomas, said Sir Topham Hatt, and I appreciate the sacrifice you would be willing to make. Let's not worry about that until this is all said and done with. We still have an engine to save. That's right, shouted Bell. Let's go get Ryan. But in order for this to work, we're going to need some more engines. Perhaps I could send a message to Mr. Percival for more help. Or you could just use me, came a voice. The engines were shocked. Puffing down the line, looking brand new as ever, was Stanley. Wow, shouted Oliver, you're back. And looking pretty sharp too, added Duck. Stanley, said Thomas, it's so good to see you, and I'm so sorry for what I did. It was all my fault, and... It's perfectly fine, Thomas, chuckled Stanley. I know you didn't do it on purpose, and it was my fault for ignoring the warning about the unsafe track. If I may, I'd like to make it all up to you. Let me help out in this rescue. But you were just repaired, gasped Flynn. Aren't you worried about becoming damaged again? Not really. I have all of these new parts that need to be put to the test. Sir Topham Hatt smiled. Welcome back, Stanley. But I'm shocked as to how fast Victor put you back together. He said it was going to take days, weeks even. Well, once James was finished, it was all hands on me, per se. But seriously, the word is getting about the railway, and all of the engines are ecstatic about what you're all doing here with Sailor John. I would like nothing better to help bring him down, since he was the true one that caused my crash. I am very happy to see you again, said Sir Topham Hatt. It's well into the afternoon now, so we don't have a lot of time before it gets dark, and I want Sailor John off that mountain by sunset. Who's with me? Yes, sir, cheered the engines. All right then, now here's the plan. Meanwhile, Sailor John was growing anxious and hungry. I don't know how much longer I can last up here, he groaned. I sure packed enough treasure, but I didn't even think about any potential supplies. Hey, what's going on down there? Is that the engine that was being repaired yesterday? Oh my, it is, gasped Ryan. Stanley's back. Hello there, Stanley. How are you feeling? I feel great, Ryan, he shouted. Let's get you down from there, shall we? I... I guess, he murmured quietly. I don't know why anyone would want to do that, considering all of the horrible things I've done recently. Just then, a train consisting of Thomas, Stanley, Duck, and Oliver began working their way up the hill. Sailor John could see them coming and grabbed his dynamite. I guess they don't think I'm serious, he growled. Well, let's show them. Thomas and the engines rammed into the gate hard. It didn't break, but Thomas was pushed up and over it eventually. Ryan, he shouted, I'm coming for you. And he quickly reversed up to the panicked engine. In the ensuing chaos, Sailor John threw the entire crate of dynamite at the other engines, which hit the gate and promptly blew it up. There's our escape, shouted Thomas. Let's go and all of the engines rushed down the hill. Oliver's back wheel became derailed at the bottom, and the whole line of engines crashed, with Thomas and Ryan piling in last. But the good news was that Ryan was safe, and so was the treasure. We did it, shouted Sir Topham Hatt. Well done, everyone. That was a bit rough, chuckled Stanley, but I've experienced far worse. Great job, everyone, added Duck. That was a real team effort. Just then, Sailor John bolted away from the scene. He had hitched a ride down in one of the treasure cars and was making a run to the docks. Sailor John hopped into one of the boats by the pier and immediately began to cast off. So long, Sodor, he laughed. It was a lovely time, but I think, oh, whoa! Suddenly, out of nowhere came Skiff. He rammed into the boat hard, sending it back to the pier. What are you doing here? asked Sailor John. I thought I blew you up. You tried, laughed Skiff. 
Harvey rescued me and thought I deserved to try out my sea legs, considering I've been stuck in a mine for months. Now thanks to you, take that! And he banged the ship again. Sailor John couldn't stay standing and fell over. Atta boy, Skiff, shouted Belle. Keep him there. Cranky, lower your hook and pick this pirate up. But before Cranky could get situated, Sailor John was back on his feet and maneuvering the boat out into open waters. Skiff was now in front of the boat, helpless against the surging machine. And here's my parting gift to you, shouted Sailor John. One bang didn't take you out, so I guess I'll try again. And he violently smashed Skiff up against the shoreline. Unfortunately, Sailor John's boat became beached as well. He was now stuck, and the engines in Sir Topham Hat were staring him down. I've made it this far, he muttered. I'm not giving up just yet. And he quickly climbed aboard a neighboring tugboat that had come to offer service. Now it's for real this time, he shouted. So long, Sodor. I'll be back to get my treasure one day. Just you wait and see. And Sailor John gradually disappeared into the wide open ocean. Well, that's a shame, muttered Belle. We didn't even end up capturing him. But we got the treasure back, said Winston. And we got our friend back, added Thomas. Ryan, I'm so sorry for everything. Will you please forgive me? Of course, Thomas. And I'm sorry to all of you as well. I don't know what I was thinking, but I obviously wasn't doing it very clearly. I should have never have teamed up with that pirate. But you all saved me, and for that I will be forever grateful. And sir, I'm sorry for the way I acted. I would completely understand it if you sent me away after this. I absolutely deserve it for my behavior. Nonsense, said Sir Topham Hatt. Like everyone else has said, we all make mistakes. Granted, some are bigger than others, but they're mistakes nonetheless. You are more than welcome to stay. But please don't befriend any shady figures in the future, understood? The engines couldn't help but laugh. And thanks to this treasure here, I'm thinking we can give it to the museum and that should solve all of our, er, uh, some of our financial problems after all of this conflict. And that's exactly what Sir Topham Hatt did. All of the stolen valuables were returned to Olfstead Castle, and anything that Sailor John had found inside the mine was put on display at the museum. Slowly but surely, trainloads of steel began arriving from the mainland, and the blown-up tracks were gradually replaced. In no time, the island of Sodor was back to being a really useful railway again. Well done, everyone. Thank you all so much for your hard work. It's been a rough few days, but with everyone's help, we have successfully undone all of the damage that Sailor John caused. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm looking forward to a future where that pirate is no longer causing chaos on this railway. The engines couldn't help but agree. Sir, what about the dynamite stand? asked Edward. The building is damaged, but it's still intact. What should we do with it? I'm glad you asked. Now I know most of you would like any trace of that pirate to be dismissed from this island. But Sailor John certainly found a special niche with his dynamite factory. It was a very successful enterprise, and I'm going to repair the building. But instead of producing dynamite, I'll turn it into a fireworks factory. Look here, I've even got a car to prove it. Great idea, sir, said Henry. Although it's not very detailed, and there's hardly any paint on it, it could use a little more color in my opinion. But what about your job as a judge at the Great Railway Show? asked James. Haven't you missed all of the meetings because you were back here on Sodor? Yes, I have, but that doesn't bother me in the slightest. And, after much thought, I've decided that the railway needs my full attention anyways. Therefore, I won't be a judge at this year's competition, but who knows in the future? Either way, I'm happy to be back as controller of the Northwestern Railway. 
Speaking of controllers, added Thomas, I think Mr. Percival here deserves three cheers for keeping this railway literally on track while everything was going on. Well done, Mr. Percival! And the engines whistled loudly. Indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. Peregrine, I knew I made the right choice when I brought you on as the narrow gauge controller. I hope you'll enjoy the peace and quiet of your regular job after all this. Oh, you have no idea, he said. Of course, I enjoyed working with you all, but let's just say that Scarloe and his friends are much calmer. I completely understand, sir, said Gordon. The narrow gauge engines are lucky to have such a competent man as their controller. Just then, Skiff rolled up. Skiff, cried Ryan. You're looking good on your wheels again, and you've met Hugo, I see. Hello, everyone. I'm off to Augsburg Harbor to finally give the children some rides. Wish me luck. Have fun, Skiff, cheered the engines. You go have the time of your life, chuckled Percy. Just then, Butch pulled up. Sir, I've looked high and low for those troublesome lorries, but I can't find them. But George and Bulgy here are saying that they saw them run off to the mainland. They were definitely the ones who blew up the tracks, added George. I don't think anyone else was involved. It was all them. Very well then, said Sir Topham Hatt. Thank you for the update. And I believe that settles it, right? Nothing else to recap if I'm not mistaken. The engines looked at each other. I suppose so, said Thomas. The tracks are repaired, you're back as controller, Skiff is fine. What else would we need to discuss? Just then, a bunch of big engines puffed into the station. Who are you guys? asked Stanley. My name is Frida, said the engine, and we are here for the Great Railway Show. The engines looked at Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, bother, he groaned. Here we go again.